Welcome back to Valheim. Today I'm going to be taking you through a step-by-step -step guide on how to build steep and pointy roofs, just like the one you see here that I've been experimenting with in my new Wilderheim series. So without further ado, turn your building brains on and let's get into it. So here's another example that's a little bit smaller, uh, as you can see on a little fishing hut that I built. So it looks really, really amazing on little fishing huts, maybe pirate themed houses. Um, looks really, really great. So with that said, let's get into the building here. The example I'm going to be using here is the same size as my Wilderheim house. Uh, so you can follow along with that. But starting off with the framing, I will say first off the bat that it does not matter the size of your house as long as it is three squares wide or six meters wide essentially. You want it to at least be three of these uh, three of these stones wide or you're not really going to be able to do this nice point that kind of juts out to kind of tie it in which I think is really nice. So at least make sure the foundation is three of these squares wide. I'm doing mine five in this case, but unlike the log cabin tutorial that I showed you all a bit earlier, you can go check out that video, I'll link it below. Um, that one has to have a specific floor plan in order for the roof to work out. This however does not. You can do any number of floor planks, odd or even, so I'm doing five, you can do four, and it doesn't matter. The roof will meet up perfectly, and you'll see why in a second. So let's get started with the frame here on this side. So starting off, you want to build up and most likely if you're doing it taller, like I did in the Wilderheim series, you'll want to use iron beams that are connected to the ground because it's a tall roof. You will need it to be supported. So just a couple iron beams on the corners is all you need and it should be good to go. And if you are building super high, then you could stagger some iron beams in the middle and kind of connect your floor to it and it will work out that way as well. So we're going to start off by placing our little one meter beams here and we're going to create kind of a little C shape here that's jutting out uh, as a little roof overhang for the house. So just taking my little one meters and we're going to go like that and then taking the 45 degree roof beams here we're going to snap them on the very outside and we're just going to keep on doing that little one meters and 45s one meters and 45s until we get to the halfway point on the house and then we'll do that exact same thing to the other side so it looks like i gotta go up one more here Perfect. So that's the halfway point, and now we do that same thing to the other side here. So as you can see, it looks pretty much like a Christmas tree at this stage, which is definitely pretty weird. I was hesitant at first, not knowing if this method would really work out, but as the Wilderheim series has already proven, it looks amazing once we tie it all in. So bear with me for a bit, and do be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more of that Wilderheim series, you can be sure to check those videos out as well for that bigger house that I did using this same method. So now that we have these two parallel Christmas trees, if you will, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and take our two meter beams and on the outside one here, not on the inside one, for the outside one we're going to snap one of the beams just on this bottom point here and we're just going to snap three in my case. You're going to leave the top one empty and you're gonna leave the bottom one empty, so you don't really want to do that. You definitely could, but I just don't think it looks quite as nice. So we're just gonna fill in the middle. Again, if your house was only four wide instead of five wide, you would just do two pretty much. And if it was three wide, you would just do one right in the center there. So again, starting not the very bottom one, but one up from the bottom. We're just gonna snap some of these two meter beams like that. That already starts to fill it in and it breaks up that Christmas tree look just so that it looks a little more, a little more like a consistent roof. Then we're gonna take our little one meter beams and snap them on the very top, just like that. So as you can see, we're just trying to break up that Christmas tree look right now. That's all we're doing. And then for the roof beam itself, you'll want to essentially have your center roof beam looking something like this, snapped starting from the very outside here, and you'll want to snap 
two beams out from it. Obviously, the middle won't be supported very well because I don't have any iron beams kind of coming up and holding it. But uh, again, that's why you, you need the iron beams for sure. But to strengthen this up a little bit so that it will hold more like that one does, we'll want to take our little one meter by one meter planks and wherever there are these little one meter sections coming out, we're going to snap them on. But on in between the little Christmas tree structures. So right in here, right in here, right in here, and right in here. So hopefully you guys can see that. We're just kind of creating, it looks like a little bit of a large ladder from the side. Uh, so we're just going to do that on both sides. And that is structural as well as uh, aesthetically pleasing later on. And you'll see why in a bit. So we're going to snap those on, and then on the very bottoms here, we're going to go ahead and take our 2 meter by 2 meters and snap them just like so. So kind of aiming for that edge there, and you can see that's how it looks on the completed frame on that side. Going to take our little 1 meter beams and snap three of them on the outside here. So this is going to become essentially our like roof flange. It'll look really nice when it's finished. And now, the reason I say the minimum you want your floor is three of these blocks wide is because now we're going to start doing that point that juts out, that really ties it together nicely, uh, as you can see on this side here. So you're going to count one, two, three of these 45 degree beams down, and that is where you're going to start snapping another 45 degree beam. So you're going to snap, rotate, snap, rotate, and snap. And you're going to do that for both sides. So one, two, three. And we're going to have it, again, just one rotated out from exactly parallel. One rotated. Snap. Rotate. Snap. Rotate. Snap. All right. And that just ties it in super nice. It was the best way that I kind of found with this roof method. And that should now hold this uh, second beam here a bit better uh, because these are more supported down lower. And now that we have that little point there, relatively uh, looking pretty nice, you know, you could leave it that way, but I like to fill it in with some of these dark wood pieces. I've tried methods of, of kind of trying to like put roof planks in between to fill it in, but it just doesn't quite look as good. As you can see, that's what I tried over here, was filling it in with roof plank at the top. So you could certainly, you know, take a moment and pause the video and check out how I did it for this roof but it just wasn't my favorite way of doing it. I didn't like it quite as much as I like uh, this method here. And because these are all the angle beams, they do not rot uh, when it rains, so you don't have to worry about that at all. So now we're gonna take our 26 degree beams uh, for a bit of the dark wood. That's what I like to do. It just kind of matches the dark wood roof a little more. If you were doing a thatch roof, uh, it might look better to just use your normal 26 degree beams for this section. And I will actually use my normal 26 degree beams. You guys can see the look, uh, the difference, because here I use the dark wood. So for this side, I'll use normal ones just so you guys can see the difference there. So we're going to start off by the top by snapping this out one, two. We're going to rotate it kind of out of 45. One, two, and then one. All right, so just at this joint. So again, one, two, and one. And that's already gonna start looking a ton better. And then we're gonna do the same thing just to this bottom section. We're just gonna rotate it out one, two. And again, from parallel, we're gonna go one, two, and snap those on. Just kind of ties those sides in a little bit. And then we're just gonna take a 45 degree beam and rotate it and snap it down right below those guys. So it's just going to kind of snap in and fill in that side piece just a little bit. Looks pretty nice. And same thing on this side. So kind of just aim at the center of there and it should snap in pretty nice, just like so. So that's definitely looking pretty nice. And if you're um, in the beginning stages of the game and you don't have dark wood yet, this is how you would do it. Uh, I also like to snap in a decorative piece at the top. I definitely prefer this raven uh, dark wood piece. It kind of, again, brings that to a point there. It just looks so nice. And again, how you can snap that in is literally just kind of aim at the top of this. And it will, uh, it will phase down and snap into place, essentially, in place of this beam right here. You could even just destroy this beam. Snap it in right there. Uh, and it's easy enough. And if, again, you were in the beginning stage of the game, you could use the... Dragon head, and it also looks pretty nice 
uh, being right there. So I'll do this one as the beginner one, and this one as the more advanced side, just so you guys can see the difference there. And if you're snapping the dragon head, it might look a bit nicer to keep this uh, wooden beam in here, just because it doesn't fill as much space as the raven does. So again, just kind of aiming right there, and it will snap into place. Looks pretty nice. It just looks too long if you snap it all the way out here, but that might be your look. You might want to put a really long one and bring out your Viking roof super far, which doesn't look bad, to be honest. Um, so again, you can kind of mess around with that a bit. Now for the roof itself. We're going to continue with these little one meter by one meter planks. And we're going to essentially keep snapping them as we build the roof out. So on every one of these, like, joints, where these 45 degree pieces meet, we're just gonna continue them out. And we're just gonna bring them out a few. I like to bring them out, you know, just so they keep sticking past the roof uh, pieces, and this will be a lot easier to do now rather than later, because if you do them later, you'll most likely forget to do them later, so... Just go ahead and do them now, and then for this bottom section, again, you can just keep taking the normal 2 meter by 2 meter planks and bringing those all the way across. And then, uh, do keep in mind you can do breakups and things. You know, I brought this little roof jut out on the top here, so you could, again, pause the video right now if you want to just take a look at that, or go watch the Wilderheim series. I've got a lot of great jut outs. Got this one that kind of comes out. Just looks kind of cool to add some other jut outs and things to break the, break the look up a bit. Um, and this would essentially be your normal, your normal house frame. So at this point, you can also just go in with, uh, with your normal beams. And this would essentially be your, your house wall right here. Um, and you know, you can put windows or do whatever you wanted there. So yeah, that would be, that would be your wall. Maybe that's a little window or something. Uh, you can do that as, as tall as you want to still be structurally okay, but you can go pretty tall with these things. Uh, as you've as you've seen me do, so yeah, this uh, this way we can essentially use these two meter by two meter on the bottom because the little part that sticks out once we get the roof pieces on it will actually not rot because it's halfway under a roof. So another cool little glitch uh, that I figured out with Valheim is uh, if you did just like a one meter, so instead of doing the two meters, if you just did a one meter, kind of like we did up here, and then a one meter. Uh, it will actually rot. These outside pieces will rot. Whereas if you just use that as a 2 meter by 2 meter, it does not rot. So now we can start with the roof pieces. So we'll aim at the outside here, and we'll just go ahead and snap a roof piece on each one of these 45 degree pieces. Um, and again, that's why I said do these little 1 meter by 1 meter beforehand just so you can keep up with it. So as we snap those roof pieces on, just keep coming out with these uh, little one meter pieces. And what this does is once you finish your house, and we can go take a look at the inside of that one as well uh, in a moment here, but once you finish your house, it fills in that gap so you, the, the inside actually looks really nice as well. And you can put chests and things on top of these uh, planks. It looks really, really cool. So again, I'll, I'll uh, actually, while I'm thinking of it, let's uh, let's go take a look at the inside of this one. And maybe I'll do a full tour of this build as well, just because it was a cool little concept that I did. But as you can see, it doesn't look bad from the inside. You kind of has the have these ledges here. They uh, don't look bad. They look very finished. And you can set things on them with item stands, or as I've done here, with the personal chests in the bedroom here. So you can really get creative, kind of have them as an extension of a desk. Whatever you'd like to do with those little... Uh, with those little jut outs every time the roof kind of comes in. So it doesn't look as bad as you might think it would look initially. So yeah, just keep coming out with the... with these ones here. And again, if you're doing like jut outs and things, I'll leave that to you to plan how you'd want those to be. But once you come out with those a few, again, just taking our 45 degree roof pieces and snapping them at every beam starting from the outside there. And that's how you fill it in. And then you'd essentially just keep doing that all the way across. So you would just continue continue snapping them, continue bringing the uh, roof uh, peak part there across. So that's the more uh, advanced way when you've got dark wood essentially. And because again, because half of this two meter by two meter is under that roof, it uh, it actually doesn't rot. These little, uh, these little one meter pieces do, 
And I do like to bring these out, that's just my style of building. I like to kind of bring them every two meters uh, just out from the roof. But again, instead of using those little one meter by one meters, you could do the two meter long and not have it rot because it'll be under that roof piece. So again, it's up to you. You know, you could break up this and delete those two one meters, pop a two meter in its place and not have it rot. Sometimes I like the grayed look of the rotten uh, or the half rotted like roof flanges there kind of matches the roof a little better depending on the case. So I'll leave it up to you whether you want to just do one meters or these two meter sections. So with this side, like I said, I'll fill it in with a thatch roof so that uh, you can see how that looks in case you want to do this with literally just wood. Don't even need core wood. So there you go. Also looks very good being uh, more beginner oriented earlier on in the game. I really actually like that look a lot because you don't see the, uh, you know, you look at it from far away, you really don't see that Christmas tree look unless you really like get down here and, and because we filled in underneath them with those planks, you don't see any cracks or light uh, spots shining through and it just looks really, really clean. So that, my friends, is how you build a pointy roof. Without the mods, of course, there is a mod where you can rotate pieces in any direction as far as you want, I think. And uh, yeah, there's a mod where you can rotate roof pieces to be super steep and not have to do the staggered look. This is, uh, this is just a helpful video for all of you vanilla players out there like me who just want a really nice way of doing it. I also forgot to mention here you can add uh, just these little one meter pieces to the outsides of that section. There we go. Kind of cleans it up a little bit. Uh, so yeah, it's a good way to break up the Christmas tree look. I think the, the version of this point right here just turns out super nice. Uh, again, you could add in another uh, another roof piece and kind of mess with that, but I just I didn't like the look of that personally. But yeah, looks super, super cool. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Again, you would fill it in or do whatever sort of... Uh, Whatever sort of jet outs you want, you know, maybe you want something here that kind of comes up and and has a little roof and ties into it. You can do that and it works and you can make your floor plan whatever even or odd numbers you want and it will always meet up at this point. So you don't have to worry about that from the get go. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe. Check out some of my other tutorials if you'd like to know more and comment below if you'd like any other videos. Um, as you see the Wilderheim series and whatnot, if you'd like other specific videos on how to build specific things. I know I got a lot of requests for this pointy roof in more detail, so here it is. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe, join the Discord server with the link in the description, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, Vikings.